Hi, welcome back to Camp K9. So, this is just a little bit of a video, a little bit of a fill-in video, um, to explain my journey to the garden that I have now. We moved into this property four and a half years ago, I think it was, I'm not quite sure. Uh, previous to that, I had been in properties that had had either communal gardens or a small garden or a patio garden that I didn't feel I could properly, properly grow vegetables in. And I, I really did want to become more and more self-sufficient. That has been one of my dreams. Um, I don't know why it's in here um, and it needed to come out. And um, and so I knew that one day I'd be able to do it, but I don't really know much about growing vegetables um, or, or fruits um, or flowers. <laughs> I really don't know much about gardening at all. Uh, but I knew that in order to do it, I needed a garden. So we have Camp K9, which is a doggy daycare, and. It, I started off as a dog walker and um, I basically what okay let's let's go back a little bit um, so I worked in the corporate world uh, I had done for some time and before that I had jumped around other various um, jobs and running my own businesses I decided that I wanted to get Badger my boy um, you, you'll see him featured in some of my videos. He is now 10 years old. He has now got degenerative myelopathy. He has li been living with it for almost a year, um, but primarily for the last six months, uh, his decline has got worse. He is now in wheels if we want to take him anywhere. So he has always been my world for 10 years. When I picked him up as uh, an eight week old puppy 10 years ago, he has been my world and just before I was due to get him I had a job where I believe that I could manage my hours um, in order to be able to raise uh, a puppy um, I believe that I'd got to that point in my career and a week before I was due to pick him up I got made redundant and I was put on garden leave immediately um, it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, I am a strong believer that everything is an opportunity. So I just looked at my situation. I was able to pick my dog, my puppy up um, and take him home and spend the summer with him. Um, with my redundancy money, I bought myself my first little van and uh, it was a little camper and we lived in it for the whole summer and I toured round. Uh, Dorset and Wales and um, and spent that time with him enjoying that time with him I then realized I didn't want to go back to a corporate world I wanted to spend the rest of um, Badger's life with Badger and so I looked at other ways that I could raise uh, an income so we, I started with dog walking uh, the dog walking grew into doggy daycare uh, we needed more space for the doggy daycare. We either needed a campus uh, based at home or we needed a field that we could um, To build it in uh, we didn't like the in inside version of the daycare dogs Loved to fulfill their senses and being in a in a warehouse all day was not um, a place we wanted to keep them our dog family began to grow as, as Camp Canine began to grow and we realised that they'd go stir crazy in a field as well. So really what we wanted to give them was a, a home-based daycare uh, where they could have all the creature comforts of being in a home with a, prop, with a nice garden and comfortable sofas and um, somewhere nice and warm when it was cold and somewhere nice and cool when it was hot and then have some land we could some private land we could walk the dogs on away from the the rest of um, the public world cyclists riders children nervous anxious dogs anything else that you come across when you're out in the world uh, in public spaces and we found this place um, and everything fell 
together. Uh, it had the right amount of space for us. Um, there was a farmer close by who had a strip of land that um, wasn't being used for much. So we could walk on there. And, um, and yeah, it all fell together. And I had my garden for the first time. And I was desperate to start planting in it. Now the only problem was was I didn't have any knowledge and I didn't have um, I didn't have a huge amount of time. I was still building up the house and the business and and working out how we were going to be um, working from this pro new property. But I was desperate to plant. So year one, I grabbed a handful of tires, um, painted them, put them on the, in the front garden away from where the the dogs were, filled them with some compost and stuck a plant in each of them. I think that year was uh, cucumbers, courgettes, peas, possibly a tomato plant, I'm not sure, I can't remember on the tomato plant. Um, anyway, the, the peas went mouldy. Um, the cucumbers and the courgettes I had coming out my ears. Um, I don't remember much else of what I planted that year. There wasn't very much, to be honest. So that was year one. Year two, I thought, okay, year one, I learned some bits and pieces. I want to do a little bit more. I'm, I'm still not ready to sort of build my garden yet. So I grabbed a couple of pallets, stuck them upside down, gave them some sides, filled them with earth and added them to my tires. So now I have my tires planted around and some, um, some pallets filled. Um, I brought my tires up uh, a little bit higher. Um, I had planted them close to the ground, so I think I went, rather than one or two high, I went three high. Um, there are some photos in my history somewhere. Uh, and I planted those changed the placing in the garden so they were along the front wall which was a lot warmer um, and less dusty than the than the where I put them before which was adjacent to the parking spaces um, the cucumbers flopped that year I had huge amount of tomatoes I could not cope um, I tried my first beetroot multicolored beetroot and fell in love with the golden and the whites. Um, I did a few other things, maybe some spring onions. Um, courgettes were always, I've always planted courgettes. I always tried to plant um, cucumbers, they didn't always work. Occasion, most of the time I had a tomato plant but I'm not that good with tomatoes digestive wise um, I can't remember exactly what I planted that year but I, I had a few more different plants but not a huge amount um, definitely hadn't entered the brassicas and the beetroots were my first uh, root veg so I grew those and yep yeah, they were I discovered cucumelons for the first time um, they were hilarious and yeah, it didn't it didn't go it didn't didn't go too badly, but cucumbers absolutely failed. But so did everybody else's that I was talking to. So that helped me feel that it wasn't me, that it was it was just that was my learning curve of you can do everything that you that you can. Um, at the end of the day some things are out of your control. So that was that year. That was the second year. The third year, I have been donated, in the second year, I've been donated some boats to use in the playground for the, for the doggy campers. And they had worked out well, but they had holes in them, so they weren't holding water, so they were no good for paddling pools, um, which was their initial intention. And um, so then we'd use them as toy boxes, but then over the winter, that had got all very messy and we thought right we're going to clean them out what should we do with them and I said I'll take them into the front garden and I'll use them as raised flower beds so I just put one down one side of the garden and one down the other side of the garden and planted them up again I 
I plant I went a little bit more a little bit more into various different species I'm trying to think what I did that year I did I did, I did a fair amount of different um, types of vegetables that year uh, I planted I planted out one boat um, with all my I went to the shops I was still buying little seedlings and little plants so I wasn't doing the whole seed thing uh, this was just me learning a little bit more about um, planting and I, I did one of the beds one of the one of the boats I did an iceberg lettuce with a red cabbage with an iceberg lettuce with a red cabbage all the way down one side and then on the other side I did I don't know pak choy with something else down the middle I had some chard and some spinach and I had some beetroots in there and some radishes for the first time and some spring onions um, and I had planted these meticulously in their little rows individually I'd done a really neat tidy job I was so proud of myself um, it had been a long day working on there I went inside I had a shower I looked out my bedroom window to look at my beautiful boat and I saw my Egyptian dog in the boat digging it up and I screamed and I came running out after her um, got her off the bed and my beautiful bed <laughs> was a complete mess uh, and all I could do was just try and neaten it up a little bit and put things more or less back into their spots um, and try <laughs> and make something of, of what was a, a mess. Uh, and then my lovely looking boat had to be wrapped in um, a netting uh, fence all the way around, all the way around it, so that um, the dogs could not, uh, all the cats could not get to it. Well, the cats still managed to occasionally, but the dogs couldn't get to it. So my beautiful, pretty-looking garden, until the plants got really established, then all the netting came down. And once, once the earth has disappeared, the dogs are less inclined to go and want to dig in it. So um, you only need to do it for a, a, a small amount of time. So that was one of my beds. Uh, on the other boat, I planted um, a couple of the squashes. I tried corn for the first time. That failed completely. Um, I'm trying to think what else I did. Oh, I know. I sowed seeds for the first time. I didn't know what I was doing, and I had very little faith that I could grow anything from seed. And I bunged a load of carrot seeds into the boat and oh my god they grew and grew and grew and they did so well and they were my real boost into believing that I could grow things from seed. Um, I then planted some spinach from seed and that just failed it never, it never came up. I planted some rocket from seed that never came up um, but I did grow some some courgette from seed and they grew very well um, however I had I ended up with more courgette than I had room for really so I started bringing in extra tires and and popping them in at the ends of the boats and and things in order to find space to put the the courgettes that I was growing uh, but that year I had a really bad case of powdery mildew that appeared on one one plant over on one side of the garden and I tried to save that plant and it just ended up spreading throughout the whole garden and taking out all of my squash and I think I ended up maybe having five squash uh, it wasn't squash sorry it was courgette five courgettes off of six six to eight plants so this year, if that happens, that plant is going. It's not going to get the chance to spread. I will, I will do anything to stop the spread of um, the powdery mildew. Uh, you can make mixes, spray mixes, and spray your plants. I did do that. I, I tried my best to try and fight it back. It wasn't going to happen. So um, what else did I do? Um, 
inspired by my carrots I had a pepper a couple of peppers that I had bought from the shop that I was cooking up and I looked at the seeds that were on my chopping board and I thought I'll have a go so I planted all of the pepper seeds and they came up like crazy I had incredibly full uh, conservatory full of pepper plants and um, it was too late in the year really it was really really too late I can't remember it was sometime in June I think that I planted them they came up well and they produced a lot of little peppers but they never really grew to anything much but again it was me just trying something out planting seeds and um, being encouraged myself encouraging myself that I was capable of growing things from seed so that was pretty much how last year went and then this year I decided this was the year this was the year when I was going to build proper raised beds because my back and my knees are not good so raised beds to make it easier and I was going to see how much I could plant. Now, Brian is not that keen on vegetables. He's very keen on becoming a vegetarian. He's not that keen on vegetables. He doesn't particularly like things that are green. So uh, a common thread through everything that I have been growing is that if there's an alternative to a green, I will grow that. So courgettes were my first. So when I discovered that, that you could get yellow courgettes, I was growing yellow courgettes rather than green courgettes. Purple broccoli rather than um, green broccoli. Purple sprouts, although they failed. Um, I, oh, that was something that I grew last year, last year or the year before. I tried them in the past anyway, and the, um, the caterpillars got them, all of them. So I lost those completely. Um, so I've lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? The raised beds for this year. So I started with the ones behind me. Started building the pallets, building them out of pallets, just rectangular. They were too tall, so I chopped the tops off, making them a little lower. Then I had the tops left over, so then I made low beds um, out of the top bits. And I soon had what I was gonna be planting in them pretty much sorted. So I decided that the two boats that I, uh, that I had, I would put over on the other side in the sun, in the main sun area, and I would plant in there. Um, then I discovered that you can get these pallet crates that people throw out, which are pallets that have got sides to them. They're normally used for um, tiles, patio slabs, roofing tiles, those kind of things. So I went on the hunt for them and I collected as many matching pairs as I could to m keep the consistency and um, and help with the design and I set those up so basically the the frames of my raised beds were all salvaged there was no cost involved in them the only cost was actually just finding driving around and finding them which I was generally doing when I was on my pickup and drop-offs for my dogs and, 